2024 might bring some big changes to California politics. And we've got the five big stories you ought to be watching for as the year progresses, plus ways you can get involved in the fight. That's all coming up. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and every year, right after the new year, I do this sort of podcast where I talk about five big stories you ought to keep an eye on as the year progresses. And boy, we've got a lot of things happening in California politics in 2024. Some could be very bad. Some could actually be quite good. And it all is going to boil down to whether we can pull together and effectively fight the broken system that we are suffering under in this state. So let me go through the five big stories you ought to keep an eye on in California news and politics in 2024. First, let's start out with the state of California budget crisis, the fiscal crisis that we're seeing. Uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom, the California Democrats, they are absolutely out of control. They are insane. We've warned a lot of times on this podcast over the past several years that we are headed for the fiscal cliff. Well, guess what? We're there, baby. We are going right over 90 miles an hour. Uh, The state of California said that they had a budget surplus in 2022, but in 2023, as we predicted, it turned into a massive sea of red ink with a $68 billion deficit. Now, instead of tightening the belt, instead of cutting the wasteful spending, focusing the state expenditures back on the core priorities, Governor Gavin Newsom and California Democrats are absolutely doubling down and tripling down on their reckless, wasteful spending practices. To say they're spending like drunken sailors would be an insult to drunken sailors. And so you've got uh, in this latest budget, illegal immigrants getting billions of dollars of free health care services at taxpayer expense while we're seeing a $68 billion deficit. It's insanity. It shows that the Democrats are absolutely disinterested and incapable of tightening the belt and actually cutting the wasteful spending. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to do some Enron style accounting to try to hide the problem, kick the can down the road, which they've been doing for the past several years. I've been telling you we've been running a deficit for the past couple of years, uh, but for the misrepresentations, falsehoods, and uh, Enron style accounting gimmicks that they've been using. Uh, But they're also, no surprise, going to be looking at tax increases. So we're going to be pushing hard against the tax increases. And the best way for us to do that and we're going to talk about taxes in just a moment, the best way for us to do that is to expose the wasteful spending. You've got to show California voters that the budget is out of control and it can be balanced without a tax increase. And here are the specific examples of waste. When I was on the San Diego City Council, that was one of the most important strategies we had in pushing back against the Democrats and the labor unions who wanted tax increases. And instead, my proposal proposal was adopted to balance the budget without tax increases. And we did it. We did it by exposing the grotesquely wasteful spending. But we've got a, we have no media in California willing to do that. They're not willing to shine a light on government spending and uh, look through the books and audit and uh, investigate. That's why at Reform California, we are focusing an entire division on pouring through the government budget pouring through state and local finances to find the excessive payouts of pensions and salaries and the overtime and the waste and the corrupt no-bid contracts, all of the things that we can cut and reform in order to fix the fiscal problem. And so I urge you to chip in online at reformcalifornia.org so we can continue to do that because this budget season is going to be so crucial. It'll have major impacts on you. They will cut programs that you want, cut programs that are core, that are beneficial in favor of the illegal immigrants getting these welfare benefits, as well as they'll be proposing tax increases, fee increases. And so we need to stop them with hard evidence of their wasteful spending and options for reforming it. ReformCalifornia.org, that's where you can chip in. Uh, uh, The second um, uh, uh, story to be watching are the tax increases. So 2024 could be the death knell of Prop 13. Oh, 
And if that happens, we are all screwed. So screwed. Prop 13 has protected pro- uh, uh, taxpayers since 1978 doesn't just limit the increase in property taxes, which is, again, a major uh, important reform, but it also says that we have the right to vote as voters on any tax increase before they go into effect. Well, those voting rights have been absolutely eviscerated by California Democrats over the years. And that's why, working with a broad-based coalition, Reform California has led the charge in the campaign to pass a California taxpayer protection initiative. And we got this on the ballot for November of 2024. So this is already going to be a big story. Um, What the taxpayer protection initiative does is it mandates that we have voter rights to approve or reject tax increases. Second, that it would have to be a two thirds vote at the local level and a majority vote at the state level for a tax increase, which is a big change from the existing um, uh, loose interpretation of Prop 13. We strengthen Prop 13 by clarifying that it has to be a statewide majority vote and it has to be a two-thirds vote at the local level for any special taxes. We also mandate honest ballot titles that if a measure contains a tax increase anywhere in the long text of a measure that they would have to put the words tax increase on the title so you know what you're voting on. If we get honest ballot titles, we can win Uh, the uh, rejection of most of these tax increases and save taxpayers billions of dollars. Finally, the measure uh, clarifies what the term fee is versus tax so that the the politicians can't sneak in a tax increase by just calling it a fee. That's what they're doing right now with those utility uh, bill uh, rate increases. They're saying, we're going to give your... um, tax returns over to the uh, utility company and charge you more if you earn too much. So it's income-based utility rates so that people with money, which means anyone pretty much out there, um, is going to be paying more as a flat fee. Even solar customers are going to get hosed by this. And that's a bait and switch from what they were told when they got solar put on their homes. Um, It's an illegal tax. Under the Taxpayer Protection Initiative, when we pass this initiative in November 2024, basically that becomes nullified. Um, So we're talking about billions of dollars in tax savings and protection going forward against costly and unfair tax hikes. Well, what the Democrats have done is not only organized a campaign to kill our initiative, but they put two of their own initiatives on the ballot, ACA 1 and ACA 13, to gut Prop 13. So they're going for broke. They are literally saying, all right, well, not only are we going to defeat their measure to to protect Prop 13 and strengthen it. But we're going to go ahead and you know do more repealing of Prop 13's provisions. And that's what ACA 1 and ACA 13 uh, would do. And that's why we have to defeat ACA 1, defeat ACA 13, and pass the Taxpayer Protection Initiative. It's a lot of stuff to do, but it all involves your tax burden and how we can make it easier for you to afford to live in California. So that's a big story in 2024. If you want to help us out with that, go to stopcaliforniataxhikes.org. Stopcaliforniataxhikes.org and ship in a contribution to the fight. The third story that you need to watch, illegal immigration. It is an absolute crisis in California. We see it across the country. But in California in particular, we are being swarmed and overwhelmed by illegal immigrants, millions that are here in California illegally, uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands that are getting in every year, adding to those numbers. And the cost is extraordinary. Uh, We see higher crime. We see uh, welfare programs that are absolutely robbing us as taxpayers, breaking the bank. Um, We are seeing homelessness. We are seeing all sorts of squalor. um, And we are having to bear the cost and the burden of illegal immigration. On top of that, you've got members of the terror watch list that are getting into this country, proven that they're getting into this country in record numbers, in, in alarming numbers in the Biden administration. And this is all because Biden's bad policies at the border obviously have opened the doors, but Gavin Newsom and California Democrats have declared California a sanctuary state. They protect criminals from deportation, which means we're going to have more crime. They give free taxpayer funded lawyers to illegal immigrants to fight deportation, your expense. They give all sorts of free welfare benefits to make it 
incentivized. You know, they they are the they are the best marketers for the human traffickers. Gavin Newsom, California Democrats are the best marketers for human traffickers um, in the entire world. They make it so easy for human traffickers to sell illegal immigrants on coming and making the journey because they say you get to California, they're going to get all this free stuff. So why not? Um, this is an evil enterprise of human trafficking. It must be stopped. And the best way to do that here in California, in addition to changing our president, uh, is to declare that we're not a sanctuary state and to cut off the uh, generous welfare programs that the Democrats have recently put into place for illegal immigrants. Uh, we have to watch that story because I am very fearful that it's highly probable. I don't want this to happen, but I fear that in 2024, there may be some sort of national security incident in, in America that we will trace back to that porous border. And the reason why I'm worried about this is because of the higher uh, activity of people on the terror watch list pouring across Biden's open border. Uh, so we have to keep an eye on that, uh, in addition to all the other ill effects of illegal immigration that we are seeing. Um, another another uh, issue I want to talk about uh, that we need to keep an eye on, how many people are fleeing California? That is the fourth big story. And the reason why I'm putting that in the mix is I don't want you to flee. I want you to stay and fight. And I know it might seem like, oh, fleeing California is the easy solution. Well, the grass is not greener on the other side. I've heard from so many people who went to Nevada, Arizona, even you know parts of uh, you know Utah and Idaho, uh, who say, "Wow, I thought I was going to a red state. It's actually blue now. It's changed." Well, a bunch of Californians who are liberal followed you out the door. Um, the grass is not always greener on the other side, and I know it might seem so tempting, but the the, the only rational choice really is to stay and fight. Because the contagion will spread across the country if you flee. And um, I think our country cannot survive a sick California. You cannot have a healthy, prosperous, and secure America with a sick California. So our patriotic duty is to stay and fight and turn things around in California. And finally, I know that we are making progress. Even with the millions of people leaving the state in the past several years and all those conservative votes that should have been cast here in California are now being cast elsewhere. We are still flipping seats in California and making progress. So if you just stay and fight and vote, there's a lot more that can be done. But I am looking at this issue intently because the question becomes, was there a dis will it dissipate? Will the people who made the easy decision to flee, are those people basically off the rolls? And now those of us remain can convert independents and Democrats over to our side and uh, move the state forward? Or are we going to see a, a rapid increase of people fleeing the state? It's a chicken and egg situation, I'm telling you. How do we turn the state around if you're walking out the door? And I know it seems so seductive to leave, but we have a duty and we have an opportunity to stay and fight. Finally, that is the, 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 the fifth story I want us to look at is um, these elections in 2024. Obviously, I've already mentioned one of the election fights that we're going to have, which is the Taxpayer Protection Initiative and Saving Prop 13. But we also have all sorts of target seats that we are going after in 2024. We obviously have these seven House seats that are toss-up that we have to defend, that we won in the last two cycles, uh, helping give the Republicans a majority in Congress in Washington, though... They really haven't been using it very effectively. We've been very disappointed um, by their lack of progress and lack of fight in Washington. But the California majority, the, the, the congressional majority, is attributable to those of us in California that won those seven seats. And so we have to retain those seven seats and fight hard and maybe pick up one or two additional seats on top of that. But the state legislature is where a lot of our action is going to be. As you know, I'm running for California State Assembly, and I want to build a reform California caucus inside the belly of the beast. And so the question is, will we be able to basically transform the Republican Party by building this reform California caucus inside the belly of the beast by electing not only myself, but a number of other reform California supported candidates for the state legislature? Man, the Democrats and the special interest in California, in Sacramento, the Sacramento swamp, they hate the fact that we've got this 
reform California caucus idea for the 2024 elections. We've got a whole list of candidates that we're supporting online at reformcalifornia.org. Click under voter guide. You'll see our list there. But we need your help in flipping those seats and also hundreds of local seats that we're targeting. School boards, district attorneys, sheriffs, city council, county board, you name it. The local seats are so important because a lot of the issues can be dealt with at the local level, particularly public safety and homelessness. Um, And obviously the curriculum and what's going on in our schools with the school board seats. We need your help. In recruiting candidates, in supporting candidates, in getting our voter guide out to voters, in uh, advancing my voter ID initiative uh, for election integrity, all of that is on the line in the 2024 elections. And we have a very focused, very strategic, very cost-effective campaign um, that's working on all of those target races. But we can't do this alone. We're going to need your help. So chip in a contribution online at reformcalifornia.org. That's reformcalifornia.org. Help put gas in the tank so we can continue to power this movement. Those are the five stories I want you to watch this year. I think that these five stories are really going to dominate a lot of our discussion and news coverage. Not saying that smash and grabs and what's going on in the schools and homelessness won't also be a topic of concern, utility rates, Uh, homeowners insurance being dropped. We have a lot on our plate in California, but the five I just went through, I think in 2024 are the ones really that are going to dominate a lot of our activity and our focus. And there's a role for you to play. You cannot just flee. You can't sit on the sidelines. You got to get in the fight. So go to reformcalifornia.org and chip in a contribution, sign up as a volunteer, bookmark the page, share the page with your friends. By the way, share this video, comment below, on these uh, stories that I just talked about. And if there's a story you think that will be uh, that you think that will also be uh, a huge story in 2024 in California, add that in the comments below. It helps us with the algorithm, smash that notification button and subscribe to this channel. So you can stay informed on California news and politics and helping us break through the, the bias, the censorship of the liberal media until next time. We'll keep looking at these five stories throughout the year. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.